I believe that Holly, Holly will not attend tonight, nor will Jay Stryker. Uh, but we still have a quorum based on faces. So if you want to just uh, give your name and check in, we'll start with that. Carolyn. Kelly. Diane. You, you're muted, Diane. My husband's coming in soon. I want to keep it muted. Diane's here, and I'm going <laughs> to mute again. Okie doke. Uh, Chris, you're going to be the uh, coordinator tonight. And uh, I see Stan, I see Chris, I see Marie. And Rocky. And Rocky. All right. I think we're, <laughs> we're all rocking. We're all ready to go. It's uh, 634. Um, before we begin the meeting, are there any, uh, any requests for an agenda change in terms of something that needs to be addressed tonight? Um, we had a question come in in the parade email that I just want. We need to figure out who to hand them to. So I don't okay. know if that's can we can we bring that up in new business, Kelly? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Uh, hearing none, we'll move on. Um, approval of the minutes from March twenty seven. Um, I make a motion to approve the amended minutes. All right. Do we have a second? I second. All those in favor? Hi, Hi Kelly. Hi, Carolyn. Hi, Kelly. And I, Peter. All right. Accepted as amended. All right. Does this approach work for you folks without having to go through things in terms of amendments during the meeting? Yeah. yeah. This is fine. All right, the first item on the agenda is pictorial postmark update. Who matched? Ooh, Kelly? Yep. Uh, so I don't know if anybody's seen the website, but the event is planned. Um, we finally got something set. So we have to do it at each post office. The, the girls can each stamp their stamp. So one at Deerfield, and then I'll cruise over to South Deerfield. They'll stamp there. And then we'll go to event at 1 p.m. at Frontier. Oh, this is all on Sunday then? Yeah, um, it was the only way it could happen, unfortunately. But, you know, Robin has been a godsend. So I think we, we're well on our way. Uh, Marie's been a huge help. She's gotten envelopes that will be pre-stamped. So if anyone wants a certain one, we'll have those available. Um, we can also have kids. I'm going to get paper, pens, and markers. And kids can draw, you know, to their future self. And we'll put that in the time capsule. Um, I had wondered, so I know Marie, you got a couple gifts for the kids, right? Yeah, each, each the four, the four, each the four kids will get a hat, and the two winners are also going to get a bag, and all four of them will get a certificate. Oh, wonderful! I have a certificate, and I have a certificate holder, and I thought for the winners, I, I've got four different colors, I think. So I think for the winners, I thought I would do blue, and for the the others, the participants, maybe like either red or gold. Uh, the certificates are just slightly different colors. Um, and I have just, to, I'm gonna ask Peter to help me with the wording, just to come up with something good about, you know, how their dedication to the town or something is, you know, we'll find, I'll get that to you hopefully before the end of next week. So well, some beginning of next week so that we can work out any uh, additions you wanna do. And just to let everybody know that the postmark can only be used for 30 days. So I'll have to let everybody know that if they go to the post office, they can get the, the post, they can get their envelope stamped for 30 days. And that's all it can be used for. That changed several times, but it is 30 days. So well, that's what Robin <laughs> told me the last time. So. Yeah. <laughs> um and then, i thought uh, it was just one day and it, we would have been out of luck because yeah, it's i had been told we i had been told it could go as long as we wanted and then i was told 60 days i don't think she was getting a lot of correct information either so but it's it's 30 days so we are good we'll just make sure to announce it yeah. um i was wondering if somebody wanted to just speak at the event if like peter was going to be there and comfortable <laughs> doing it or carolyn or somebody i personally don't want to do it you need to do the presentations yeah we're going to do it at the start of, of the lecture. 
just before the lecture goes? I think Peter's a good choice. <laughs> <laughs> well, Peter, you're now your chair of the committee, and it's it's really this is a big deal, you know. Okay. All and, right. And the <laughs> amount of time that poor Kelly has put into this. <laughs> oh my God. Well, well I, just I don't have to wear a Santa Claus suit. I guess I can do it. Yeah. Just to let you all know, too, that on Monday, May 1st, the two winners are going down to appear on Channel 22 on their program called Mass Appeal. And they'll be promoting the two the two girls and Peter will be on the program to promote Founders Day weekend. Oh, and, and they said they said that we'll have a link to that by the end of the day. So we can put that out as an advertisement for Founders Day weekend because I'll talk about all of it. So Kelly, after they're done with the stamp and everything like that, will they give us the stamp so yep. we can put it in, in the time capsules? Yep, they'll decommission it and then we can put it in the time capsule. Okay, perfect. And Robin said that um, they ended up creating some videos, some how-to videos because they don't do these often enough. So the post office created some videos to teach postmasters how to do it. And they used our letters as an example, because our letter was written so well. And that's all Marie. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought it was funny. Uh, um, I, have, I have two questions. Um, the certificates, can they be framed? Because my, yeah, I have some, I have my some, experience um, is, is that they get damaged if they're not in a frame. Yeah, no, I, I've got these. Uh, it's, it's like a folder. It's like a hard it's it's a nice folder that opens up. It's almost like a graduation folder, but it it's not padded. But it's a it's a hard cardboard thing that lifts up, and the 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 certificate is inside, so it will be protected. Do you have a objection to having frame it uh, ahead of time? No, I can I can frame. Well, how about if we frame the two winners and then give the runners up the ones in the mm -hmm. in the in the folders, okay? Just I just wanna distinguish a little bit between the winners and the runners up. Perfect. Okay, I can uh, do that. Second, second question I, is on Sunday the 7th, when you when you have these pre-addressed, well, not pre-addressed, but pre-stamped. Pre-stamped, yeah. Um, how many do we expect? Because, because Sunday was originally going to be basically an adult presentation, Gary mm -hmm. Sanderson, and now we have an hour where we could have a lot of kids and we might have to shift around our refreshments and stuff like that. How many well, do we expect? I'm, I've, I've, I've ordered a hundred envelopes from each post office. So a hundred from, <laughs> because people can, you know, do it later too, but I've ordered a hundred from Deerfield and a hundred from South Deerfield that are stamped and, and already have the thing on them. And I figured we could, uh, sell them to people for basically what it costs, which is like 80 cents a piece, or we could charge a dollar to make it a little bit easier. Or unless you want to no. fund it, and give them away. But I think, um, I, think, I think it has to be funded. We'll figure that one off. Okay. okay. But um, the, uh, what, what I've arranged, I, I've I've got the refreshments covered for the for the kids. So we're going to have some cookies and maybe some ice cream. Especially if we have leftover ice cream from Saturday, we can we can have it for that first hour. So we'll have a few cookies. We'll have a few dozen cookies and stuff for that first hour. So Kathy doesn't need to change what she's doing significantly. She might want okay. to come a little bit early, but she doesn't have to come at, she doesn't have to come at one o'clock, you know, but she's been coming like at two 30 or so, but she could come at two o'clock. So I, I don't know what she was upset about, but um, I mean, in well, terms she, of this weekend, I think, I, I think we know what she was upset about. Well, I know that, what she was upset that, about, but I don't know in terms of, she doesn't need to do anything different. I was just letting her know that we might have more people we only okay, have about so, 25 okay, people so, so that answers that question. No yeah. change of plans from Kathleen Thomas. No. And you've got it covered for the kids that might show up for that hour. Yeah, I got it covered. And we'll find a funding mechanism so that they can just take the stamped envelopes. Well, we saved money from the last speaker event because Barbara returned her check. And then the kid didn't show up. So I ended up doing the AV stuff. So we saved like 300 bucks there and that would that would cover it. Yep. Okay. So the Friends of Deerfield will cover it. And I think we have a quorum of the Friends of Deerfield. Um, does everyone vote yay on that one? Legally, can we vote? Because we not we do not hold it. Yeah, we can. We can always record it minutes later on. You can just what you can say, Chris, is there a consensus? And then you can take the formal vote later. Yep, right. 
So we're supportive of that. Yes. We probably should have opened the meeting and we did. Sorry about that. We should have probably. You want to take a break now, Chris, and just do that? Um, yeah, yeah, let other me. Other agenda items to. Yeah, just in case we have other things like this. We, we're, we're almost six weeks out. We can't lose time anymore. Okay. Um, okay. As vice president, can you open? The yeah, meeting? I want to call the meeting of the Friends of Deerfield Board of Directors to order. Stan, will you record that Alex is out with an upset stomach or whatever, and the rest of us are here? Okay, you guys can go back to your meeting. And so we'll take that vote right now. Oh, to you want to take it? to fund the pre-stamped envelopes, making yeah. them available for the Sunday event and thereafter. That's my motion. Second. Okay, Wait a minute. To vote the pre-stamp and the what, Chris? Pre-stamped envelopes will be available free of charge. Oh, free. Okay. During the Sunday, May 7th event and thereafter for 30 days. Okay, that will be like a hundred. So we're talking less than two hundred dollars. So I okay. second it. I'll second, I'll second it. Oh, it's okay. Okay. Sorry. Okay, all in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. okay, we're all set. Sorry, sorry, uh, Peter. Okay, we're going to pause our meeting and go right. back to Deerfield 350. All right, that's all, right. all I had. Thank well, you, friends a, of Deerfield. Sorry. That's an excellent report. Um, I'm glad we're moving this along. Should be a good combination. Um, Update on the post parade events and fireworks. Before, oh, so we're done going talking about the founders. Uh, the postmark. No, we haven't. Oh. We haven't gotten. We'll get to Founders Day okay. when we get to the historic historic stuff. Okay. All right. Um, Susie Susie Antonellis is. Uh, she had three bands lined up, but unfortunately, because we were, it took so long to sort out the fireworks. She lost the band. So she is starting over again, but she is asking Deerfield Elementary for um, permission to do post parade events, you know, like um, face painting, the balloon man, that, you know, kid stuff. So I'm pretty excited about that. And then my understanding is that um, uh, Deerfield. Um, through you know, friends of Deerfield, we're going to support um, hamburgers and hot dogs and ice cream or something like that. It looks like Susie's on. Is yeah, that... my audio isn't working on my computer. I don't. Oh, that's right. So I'm I'm on the phone. <laughs> oh, okay. Sorry. So Susie, I didn't mean to to take over your report. Go ahead. Um, bye. Maybe. I... On the phone, okay. So I have um, arranged for the blow up people, the party patrol people. I have five blow ups. One of them, one of them is for a toddler. I had to get two generators, and that cost is a little over two thousand dollars. Okay. Um, I also have. That that is scheduled for five to seven thirty. Then I have the balloon twisting man Ed Popielziak. Popielziak. He can come from five thirty to seven thirty because he's at another event. Um, have a table set up, and that's you know making balloon animals and balloon hats and that type of thing, and that is. $300. I don't know how much more you want to spend. Um, I'll, we'll do also do face painting. We'll have some some kids volunteer to do the painting and the supplies are probably about 50 bucks. I also have spoken to Firefly Fields regarding having unicorn horse rides. Um, there, I didn't, I just have a price. The price for two hours of that is $470. So I don't know how much you want to spend. I didn't book them yet, but I could tomorrow if I want to spend that kind of money. 
And do you I have, have music? Or, do you have music or not? I don't. The friends do. Um, I have not talked to the police yet. I have ordered a handicapped porta potty. And then the friends are doing some things. I believe the friends are going to do music from five to nine. And then they're going to have free ice cream and free hamburgers and hot dogs. I had not planned to order any tables or chairs or anything because I figured we just can put on the flyer to bring blankets and chairs. That's an extra expense. I don't know what you. Um, yeah, no, I about agree. That. Um, I also talked to this Stanley today and he, um, I asked, I spoke to Tina about just using the ball field, but Stanley wanted to have a little pavilion in back. And I'll email her tomorrow about um, using that. Um, it looks like Kelly has a question, Peter. Actually, this is related Sorry. to um, the email we got that I had mentioned. Um, the Flying Jackrabbits, which are from the Frontier Middle School Fiddle Band, have offered to play after the parade. They can't march in it because of the instruments. And so they wanted to know who they should talk to about playing after the parade somewhere, whether it be Saturday or Sunday. Um, so we just wanted to know who best to pass them to. Can you tell us more what this is? Uh, it's the Frontier Middle School, Flying Jack Rabbits. They're playing double basses and cellos. They can't march because of the size of the instruments, so they wanted to play somewhere else. And oh, How cool is that? I know. I thought that was spectacular. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I think because these instruments are extremely vulnerable and costly, the best place is to put them at the chicken barbecue uh, under the pavilion. So on Sunday? No, on Sunday, so there's no chance they could be harmed. Okay, so do you, who, do you want to give them to you, Chris, or? Uh, hand them to Stan. Sorry, Stan? Stan. Okay. I'm volunteering you because you're local. <laughs> but I, I, I don't know, does anyone disagree? I mean, these are expensive equipment and we know we're going to be covered from the rain on, on Sunday. It's fine. And plus I think, especially at the early, the early serving, which is tending to be older persons based on their class years, I think they would love to hear that. Yeah, I think that would be cool. I do too. I just think it's great that the kids want to participate. That's fabulous. Me too. All right, I'll make sure they go to, uh, I will get them to stand. Okay. Do we need to um, just try to figure out my tally here? Do we need to we need to approve Sue's budget? Anybody want to discuss this further? You want to include the uh, unicorn riding? I, I it, it's not very much money. I think we should. I think it's just a nice thing. What age group is the unicorn rides? That's for really younger kids, right, Susie? Yeah, it, there's a weight limit. I know you have to be three. And then it's a weight limit above that. I'm not sure of the weight limit. I, I think it's wonderful to have something for little kids. I think we um, need to talk also about, um, I really feel that we need a few uh, tables and chairs. Um, I feel that we need trash cans. I need to feel, find out who is gonna pick up the trash. That might be an additional expense for the town on this function. I think those are some important things that elderly people may want to sit um, and eat their hot dog hamburg. And trash is a main factor. I feel that, personally speaking, I feel that I will not have time to pick up trash because we're very busy for the next morning getting ready for our barbecue. Stan, do you have some idea about um, 
cost to get a few people to pick up the trash and get rid of it? I don't know that at all. I know a table will cost $14, and I know the chairs are like a little under $2 a piece. So, so Stan, how many tables do we need? I think we need at least, I think we, if we set up enough, I think we, I, I, what I figured was 10 and maybe uh, 50 chairs. Okay, one second. Um... And we will need trash cans. I have no idea what those cost. That so would be about two hundred dollars. So, so, so basically, so basically, what what uh, Susie um, suggested totals up to just ballpark it. It's three thousand yeah, dollars. I mean, like I mean, forty eight thirty. Yeah. And so, if we go with like thirty five hundred. Um, or four thousand. If the town approves that, we're co we're covered on that miscellaneous stuff, and we can we can probably go out there and at, we haven't approached the teams yet. Um, yeah, like the varsity baseball, basketball, volleyball, these types of teams, football, to see if we can get some volunteers. We really haven't done that yet because we're trying to sort this all out. I think we can come up with the necessary personnel. To help out on this type of stuff, and but but we need from the town, you know, thirty five hundred or four thousand bucks for this. Um, I I think this is fine. We just need to vote it. Susie has the you know there is money in our accounts for that, and so would you consider that appropriate uh, not to exceed four thousand? Yeah. Is that going to include the police? I have no um, idea if we're going to need police, if they're going to say they have to be. The police, the police, the police have already budgeted for the the weekend already. That's separate for our, you know, town event like that. And so anything, and we've agreed with the town, the Friends of Deerfield, anything that's truly excessive or specialized in terms of police and fire, we'll have the discussion to figure out how to fund it. Yeah. Um, so Susie, you feel okay with four thousand? She doesn't have a band yet. Getting a band. Is that out of another? They're having, a, they're having the. Um, having friends of Deerfield doing. Friends of mm -hmm. Deerfield is having a DJ, I think. Okay. So Stan, do Stan, do you have that locked in or soon to be locked in? And can you explain what it is? I have it soon to be locked in. I did not know the proper location, or I and now I know it's the proper time is five o'clock and not five thirty. I have um, I have Killian Stewart, a high the high school student that we've all talked about. He and his parents will be playing music from I can I'll ask him now to come at five to nine nine fifteen. Um, you can only play four hours, so it'll be five, five to nine. So we'll have a half hour without music. Yeah, but that's a transition time when people will be moving to Frontier Regional School lots to watch the fireworks. Right. So when the music goes down, that's a signal to move people across the street. <laughs> that works. Yeah. The only thing I'm concerned about is being out there on that field that late and not having any lights. There's that we, place is very dark and it yeah, I think they'll have uh, they'll they can ha we can arrange for them to leave the uh, parking lot lights on. Oh, I mean around the school if they want to do something out in the back. Wait, wait, wait which school are we talking about? The elementary school. Okay, because like I have concern. I have concerns about the frontier school lighting also. Um, they have the football lights. Yeah. So but we we haven't got into that. We, okay, so so if Deerfield Elementary School doesn't have anything like that, and we haven't even approached Frontier in terms of what it takes to turn those things on and what it takes to turn them off, because they have to be off for the fireworks. Yeah. And if there's a time lag depending on what type of technology it is, that we need to sort that out. But we, Friends of Deerfield, have not done that with Frontier yet. Okay. Well, that would be on the to-do list then. 
So then yeah. you may have to cut the uh, music off at, are uh, you suggesting 8.30? Does it get dark at the grammar yeah. school? Actually, yeah. it's projected that the sun goes down at 8.30 on that day, June 17, 2023. So it'll be dark about nine. And that's why I we shoot fireworks. You, the few, it's, they have very few lighting on the outside of that building, and I don't know what they have in the back. But even on the ma on the main places where I have to use at night, it's it's very dark. And so I guess I'm concerned if people are walking out in that field, or especially if they're older people walking from the back to the front. I mean, you just can't see. Maybe 8:30 would be a better time. I don't know. Well, I don't well, think by ear, and then we'll see. We'll con we'll we'll come up with a a good time. Oh no, I can't do that because I need to hire the. the no, DJ. no, hire hire the DJ. The DJ is not expensive. Hire the DJ from five to nine. In terms of cutting it off and how we uh, organize people to start moving to Frontier, we can figure that out early in the week of that week. Um, you know, at, because we can size it up and just do walkthroughs and then decide if we have auxiliary lighting that we need that we'll just bring in and shoot, or if we can do it safely and make sure nobody falls. There, There is lighting available um, from Homeland Security. The caches have some light. And also, um, I think we have a little bit of, might have one or two portable lights. I think we can find that stuff, but we also know what the weather is, um, you know, at the beginning of that week. So, I mean, the fireworks may be on Sunday and it may be on Monday. You just never know what's going to happen. So um, not necessarily, I'm not putting it off, but that that is something that could be figured out relatively, I think, closer to the parade day. Are there any other items that uh, have uh, costs that you can think of? I, we still haven't taken the vote yet, so I'm just yeah. The the, the handicap porta potty is probably going to be I want to say like probably four hundred dollars to get it for the day. Expensive. I've had to do that before, and it's expensive. I don't know if get a deal, but. Okay. Well, where are the parade porta potties going to be? They talked about getting some porta potties for the parade. Where are those going to be set up? Um, so those are we're going to have at the start of the parade uh, near the town common. We're going to have handicap porta potties either at the library or at the bank. We're still working out that detail. I think that's it, right, right Rocky? And oh, did he leave? Oh, Rocky's gone. And then at Frontier. Is going to be some porta potties, if I remember correctly. So we might be able to use those that night, too, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you know where at Frontier you're planning on putting them? No, I haven't been. I haven't been doing the corresponding with mm -hmm. that. I think it's Rocky, who has disappeared. I know the town common was going to be where Cumbies was, and then of course the handicap would be at the bank or the library. As for the two endpoints, I don't know yet. But I have a general question for all this post parade and parade. What happens if it's steady rain? That's What's going question. to happen? Um, Hatfields was steady rain. We we still participated. I think I think unless you've got lightning and thunder, I think you have to go with it. Yeah, it's too hard to well, change. Well, it's my impression that if you have a band, the band will not march if it's raining because they're on their instruments. I've 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 marched in the in a in the rain before in, with a marching band. The only reason I'm saying that is when I was in the academy's band. Mm -hmm. At the academy that I went to, it, it, was, it was raining and the bands just left the parade instantly. Yeah. We'll just hope for no rain. I think it depends on the band. Yeah. I know I, they forced us to march in the rain, which is why I didn't continue in the marching band in high school. <laughs> <laughs>
a lot of times the the whether the, well, the decision is based not on the instruments but on the uniform yeah. we had uniforms that when they got wet ran mm -hmm. so everything we wore underneath the uniforms turned blue mm -hmm. but nonetheless um the the bounce house stuff would have to be postponed yeah they can't go on that yeah, and just so you know, in the state in the state of Massachusetts, we can't set up fireworks or fire them if it's raining. Yeah, but we'll we'll know all this stuff fairly. It will be clear, you know, the beginning of the week what we have to do and what. Well, that's that's interesting because in Vermont, I know I've spent a number of nights in the pouring rain watching fireworks. So I'm wondering. That's kind totally, of interesting. Totally different law in Massachusetts. Yeah. I guess so. No, I think you can shoot them in the fireworks. You can't set them up in the rain. You can shoot them in the rain. You can't set them up in the rain. The experts but, tell me we can't do either in Massachusetts. Can't do either? Yeah. Based on the latest laws. Hmm. But it, do you want a, a rain date for the bounce stuff? Well, we um, can do it on Sunday. Like on, yeah, on like on Sunday. But then Sunday's the stuff up the. Deerfield Academy. Yeah, I don't think Deerfield Academy wants anything extra no. up there. Well, I think we already have them up there at Deerfield Academy. We only have, we don't have nearly as we have a lot more down here than we do up there. Oh, okay. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and the and the pony and the balloon man. Go to the next week. The rain date for next I, I guess the rain date, the best rain date would be Sunday the 18th at the Deerfield Elementary School. Otherwise, it just disappears. Yeah. Or work with Diane Martin on, on her Founders Day. Or is that too much, Diane? It's too different. It's, that's too much too early. It's a month away, yeah. a month apart. Okay. Yeah. Months. Be hard to do that. Oh, that's true. I'm, I'm thinking the wrong way. My, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. It's like a lot of balls in the air. Um, yeah. And then the other thing I was thinking on that regard is what we're doing is Stan, I don't know if we've done it, but we need to line up the DJ for Saturday night and Sunday night at, at a minimum. So that even, and maybe even Monday, so that even if we couldn't do all the kids stuff on Monday night, the 19th, because it's the second rain day, we could at least create a festive environment with music at a minimum. Um, so we, we really need to think about lining that up with that DJ, you know, the, the high school um, professional and his parents. And it's a vehicle-based DJ, so it's a mobile unit. We can move it to the high school if if we don't have anything going on at Deerfield Elementary. Huh. Okay. Does that sound reasonable to people? Then we create that backup no matter what. I you can't move the rain date to Sunday from five to seven thirty because they're using the same three of the same bounce houses up at Deerfield Academy as they would be down here, elementary school on Saturday. So then it's there. Yeah. Well, you just have two then, because you said you've got five, right? You've got five for Deerfield and two Saturday for the for three. the barbecue. Three for barbecue. Three. Three for the barbecue. So then you just have two down there. Yeah, but there's going to be a lot more kids going to that than there are at the barbecue. Great. So we make a decision to redeploy during that week. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I had to sign a contract for this. Well, let's let's take that one offline in terms of Stan can work with Susie and come up with the best way to sign a contract. And if there's a little bit more logistic cost based on where it's delivered to and set up, okay, we'll go with the flow based on that. Even if we have to take it down from 
one place and move it to the other. I mean, I'm sure anything is possible if we cover a contingency up front. We can't predict weather, so we're gonna to have to try to deal with it. Yeah. Do we vote on the uh, budget? We haven't yet. Uh, I'm just, I was sort of <laughs> waiting to hear the conversation. I don't hear that we've broken the bank at 4,000 if with the other contingencies. So we can, you want to give me a motion for an upper limit of 4,000 for the after parade? I, I will make a motion to um, support up to 4,000 for after um, parade activities on um, June 17th. Is that something you're comfortable with, Sue? So, Sue so and Stan and whoever's working on it, Chris? I think what happens is Sue and I need to get together and coordinate and talk. If, if you're comfortable with the 4,000, I think Sue and I could work together, even if we all both have to order these tables, chairs. The only thing I don't know is picking up the trash. Um, but that's maybe, maybe the town could do that. I don't know if they would do that. I don't know if there's dumpsters at the, at the school, but I think it's something maybe if you vote the 4,000, that'd be good. Maybe that could be our budget soon. And that's it. We, we, use, um, we use trash cans uh, for our drive-through um, flu clinic from the highway garage. So I think we could take some trash cans from the highway garage, put some plastic bags in them, and then ask the highway department to pick them up. Oh, um, okay. I mean, okay. I don't think we have to pay for trash hauling. Um, if we can get kids, you know, like sports teams to sponsor this event, be part of the sponsoring event, then, um, you know, just to pick up the trash, then all they have to do is, you know, is the highway department can come by and pick it up. They pick up the cans and pick up the, um, you know, trash bags and take it to the dump uh, or, you know, the transfer station. So and that would be fine. So we're all in agreement, 4,000? Nope, nobody yeah, seconded second. it yet. I need a second to the motion. I'll second it. All right, all those in favor? I like going. Hi, Kelly. It looks like it's unanimous. Okay. If there's any issues, just, you know, come, please come back and, but I think we, you know, some of these things we can get sorted out without, um, it's the same as, you know, tables. Maybe we can get the highway department to take some tables from the town hall over. I don't know if we have 10 tables, Stan, but. You I don't know. think you do, you don't. Okay. Do they have a cafeteria well, there? But we have tables from the uh, South Deerfield Fire District. Actually, we could use, probably. Okay. Yeah. I'm, no, I'm thinking, no, thinking of it because we've used them before. And I think there's chairs as well you know, folding chairs, they might have folding chairs or the uh, old Deerfield Fire District might have folding chairs because they have, when they have their meeting, they use folding chairs. Well, for what it's worth, it's about 40 folding chairs behind the senior center. <laughs> They're out, I mean, the 1888 building. Yeah, well, I'm so sure. So I think we just uh, defer to Susie and Stan to come up with the layout and what they need, and then we'll go and get it where we can get it from the town or go rent it if we have to rent it. Yeah, but I don't think we do need to rent it. I, I think there's enough around that would be okay. Yeah, so it's close. We're going to need person power also for moving tables and chairs. Yep. Does, but, does the grammar school have a cafeteria? Yes, but it, their their tables and chairs are all one it's unit, oh, and okay. they and they are on it's wheels fun. that wheel up to the wall and back. It, I got it. it. They, it would, they would be difficult to move outside. Yeah, you can't. I wouldn't. Yeah. Oh, I would just think if they had folding tables. I I, I get it. <laughs> yeah. And they're short. 
<laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. I thought of that. Okay. Uh, so that's unanimous. Yes. Any other discussion? So Stan and Susie will uh, get together, and I, I guess Stan, what I ask you or, or to do is when you've massaged this thing enough and you've got a sort of a game plan, maybe just drop down some notes and just drop it to the committee just to keep us up to date. Okay. Doesn't have to be elaborate or just, you know, bulleted things or, yeah, we thought about this and this is what we're going to do and, and that's all we need. Okay. Shout out. We especially, we especially want to keep Kelly and uh, the website up to date with what's going on. A lot of people said that a lot of it, a lot of, um, a lot of people don't know what's going on because of lack of advertising. So, uh, yeah. well, that's, that's no, you can advertise and they'll still be like, what? Cause people don't I, read or see everything. I know and, that, yeah. I know that, but yeah. it's, uh, just Unless you personally call each person, they're going to complain that they didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, let's move on to the parade working group. Um, okay. That's in your lap. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Holly didn't give me much to report out on, and I honestly didn't prepare. So uh, we are steadily working forward. We have uh, recently reached out to the local organization and businesses we hadn't heard from, trying to see if they wanted to participate uh, and, you know, initiate conversations. Um, and so slowly we're getting there. Uh, I think people just, the postcards went out and then they promptly forgot about it. So it's just kind of reminding them that there is a parade coming up and stuff. We've done some, a lot, a lot of advertising. And I think that's hey, it helped out a bit. Um, we did digital and print advertising, just letting people know about the parade and reminding them. I think we got some calls from that. Um, uh, Rocky, am I missing anything? Uh, at the town meeting the other night, I was there and I set up a table uh, hoping to get some volunteers for the parade. I got about six people signed up. Excellent. That's uh, the next thing. We have a volunteer meeting in a couple weeks in which uh, people that have volunteered so far or, or offered to volunteer, we're going to just gather them and start um, figuring out what they want to do and, and just kind of figuring out jobs and roles and things like that. And what you do is you ask them to bring their friends. Yes, yeah. <laughs> and their family and their yeah. second cousin. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, unfortunately, that's just the way it is nowadays. But yeah, I, we had gotten a contact from the school, uh, or Marie did. Um, Scott Dredge said there were groups there that do volunteer. Uh, so then he said, absolutely. He responded right away and then copied a bunch of teachers or something. And I've emailed them twice and they've not responded. So I don't know. I'm not getting anywhere there. No school last week. No, this this has not been just last week. This was. No, this has been going on. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, you know what's really effective is to ask the coaches of the, like the boys sport teams. You know the older kids sport teams, girls too. Do um, we have names? Like I don't. Well, Scott Dredge is the football coach. Oh well, there you go. So he He's... knows all the other coaches. Excellent. He's always really quick to respond. It's yeah. nice. Um, Kelly, Kelly, the National Honor Society, too. They okay. always, oh, yes, they're very they, good. They like to volunteer and help out. Okay. There's okay, so, so, so one thing here is that maybe Marie and Kelly can work together on how we mobilize the teams because we're going to need help on Sunday and we're going to need help on Saturday. And so we got to figure out how to do this and, you know, optimize it. Mm-hmm. Terms of the teams, because you know John Sis knows the baseball team and has them putting all this stuff up for Memorial Day, and um, so you know there's connections in terms of getting at these coaches. But then we have to figure out how we're going to use these resources between the two days. Um, Carl Carl Sayre is the um, athletic director of Frontier. I um, saw that. C uh, C Y R, okay. and, um, and because this is a recorded meeting, I I will te te text you. I mean, I will email you his phone number. Okay. Okay. Kelly. 
Mm -hmm. um, so that you can talk to him because he's he's very good. He's very a nice guy. Yeah, and he could he could give you the coach's names. Okay. And yeah, I know. I'll, I'll definitely loop Marie in. Rocky, we'll Rocky's one hundred percent correct. The honor society. I mean, they do stuff for the Memorial Day, and they're very active already, and they're really good kids. So yeah, and it's it's stuff that they can list on their college applications and stuff like that as community service. So I think you know we could we could enlist them for the rest of the school year actually. So, um, you know, for the Founders Day events and stuff like that, that's another group that can come and, you know, help. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think that's all I have. I didn't really prepare too much, but we're just steadily working. Good. Is, it, is there a way that we can find out, Kelly, which of the donors I'm talking about business and nonprofits to friends of Deerfield were invited to the parade and which are saying they want to participate or haven't, or which haven't answered because we need to reach out to our donor base, but we don't want to reach out if it's already known what the situation is with them. You know what I mean? It, uh, yeah. it just doesn't like, look like we're all aligned. Um, I mean, do you have a list or is there some place where I can find out and I can, yeah, on the, the spreadsheet on, we have the, on the web on our website friendsofdeerfield.org we have all the donors there okay yeah i can take a look all the way from you know major business donors to uh individual donors okay I'll take if, a we look. Can, if we can know that then uh, we would orient our communications accordingly but and reach out to people and say why aren't you participating etc or do mm -hmm. you just want to march with us a couple of your employees want to march with us or you want to do something bigger, but we're running out of time. We need to sign up. Okay. Yeah. I'll take yeah. a look and I'll let you know who I've heard from and, and who we haven't. Yeah. At our next parade meeting, uh, we're going to be going over this actually. Uh, we did have a deadline to try and get all our paperwork and the applications in, but we extended it to May 1st uh, because a lot of people haven't returned them. Yeah, I mean, I, th I think you run into that, but. Yeah. When is your next meeting, Rocky? Next Monday, I think. Yeah. Well, so we may have to extend that May 1st if, if, if sponsors of Friends of Deerfield did not get an invitation. You checking on something, Rocky? Yeah, yeah go ahead. You guys go ahead. It's making notations. <laughs> All right, so you good, Kelly? Good. Yes. All right. Let's moving on to the uh, working history group. Uh, update. Um, we've had two events in the past week. Uh, there was a really nice history photo exhibit and walking tour of the Clark Orchard in Wisdom or West Deerfield on the 22nd of April. Um, tour was led by Tom and Ben Clark and he had tables covered with old photographs of the farm from both the aerial views and the ground and um, got lucky and had uh, photographs from a 1920s school teacher that taught school next door in this one room schoolhouse. So she had pictures of her kids and the schoolhouse at that, at that point. Uh, Marie worked with Tom to get all that stuff uh, blown up and uh, it, uh, it was a very nice gathering. Uh, there were about 16 po folks there, uh, which is a good, uh, just about the right crowd for that actually walking tour. Because we um, went out and walked up to the orchard all the way up to the top of the hill, even though Marie didn't think I was going to make it. Um, 
And um, the, the photographs are wonderful. Just looking, you know, back 70 years ago when it was all open land and now it's all forested or a lot of it's forested. The fields were bare and now it's covered with orchard. So it was a, it was a really nice way to look at landscape change over time between the photographs and, and actually going out there and seeing it. Uh, and then Barb Matthews gave a nice talk on uh, Sunday afternoon on uh, recovering community histories of poor residents in the 19th and 20th centuries, uh, particularly focused on Deerfield. Um, and it's too bad Trevor missed it because he told me one day he really wants to know about what the selectmen's responsibilities were. <laughs> and in the 19th century, that was one of the major responsibilities of the selectmen was as overseers of the poor. Yes. Fortunately, you don't have to deal with that. There's a lot of other crap, but uh, yeah. mosquitoes <laughs> don't talk back to you, nor do they <laughs> starve to death if you don't do something. So, um, yeah. It was rather uh, interesting finding out that people got to live at other people's houses on a rotating basis if they couldn't take care of themselves. I found that rather intriguing. And yeah, they get paid to do it too. Yeah, yeah. In fact, there were people that would, um, they, they had auctions every year to see who would take care of the poor yeah. or how many pennies a day. Isn't uh, that it, quite a, you know, quite a different uh, world there. Yeah. And um, with the, the uh, I got to tell you, Chris, those refreshments are really good. <laughs> They're she incredible. Does a, she does a bank of job. Very nice job. Um, and there was some also some good lively discussion afterwards. They laid out some uh, six or seven tables, and people all sat around the tables and and chatted and whatever. It was a good community event. It's pretty good. Actually, pretty cool. I just want to correct you, Peter. I think there were closer to thirty people on Saturday. That's what I said. You know, you said 15 or 16. Yeah. It was quite really 30. 30? Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I agree. It was about 30. I yeah. heard it was very well received. Yeah. Tom, Tom Clark's sisters sat with me after Barbara Matthews' speech, and uh, she said it was very well received. Tom was quite pleased. Yeah. So, very. And they were so good. They had watering stations every few feet so everybody could stay hydrated. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was really nice. And they gave out cider and water. And and at the very end, they gave out some hard cider. <laughs> it went down very smoothly. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, I just want to report on those. And then, uh, Diane, can you give us an update on Founders Day, please? Um, all righty. Well, Founders Day is evolving. Um, what has, <laughs> <Thank> you, <Diane. laughs> yeah, what better word? Uh, let's start on Friday and we'll get muddled up on Saturday, right, Carolyn? Uh, yeah, on Friday, the teach well, I had approached the school about doing bells so the kids could visualize 350. Well, they're in, de in it wholeheartedly, they're making 350 bells. And uh, they've contacted French Frontier Regional, and they're going to be walking the bells from Gra the Deerfield Elementary Grammar School through the, I believe, through the back lot with the band. Well, maybe with the band, maybe they're doing the sidewalks. But anyways, they're going to be walking the bells to the Tilton Library, and the bells are going to be hung outside for display so everybody can see what a large number 350 actually is. Um, that's the set, the Friday. We haven't gotten back with what time. It is a half day of school because I believe the prom is on that day. So I'm assuming most everything is going to be starting in the going to be happening in the a.m. The delivery of the bells and the band. Um, Saturday, uh, I just received a text that the Stone Soup Cafe cannot make it. Oh. The staffing issues. Oh. Anyways, we will have the Farley String Band. Um, we, I have the book for the signing for the time capsule. Uh, 
we have decided where we're going to have that little 10 by 20 band. And of course, those are the beautiful, if you, if you look up, everybody, look up, look up, Carolyn, look up. <laughs> no, These are the bells, good. and it says I rang the bell. These are the beautiful bells that students are going to be getting. Wow. Um, so and, beautiful. You know, and, and basically bring a chair, have a picnic. I handed out a whole bunch of these sheets at town meeting. Said if you can't make it, just sit outside and make sure we're counting the bells right. Just be outside somewhere in your neighborhood and just enjoy the sound of the ringing of the bells. Uh, and then I guess now we get to you, Carolyn, because well, the ringing of the bells has become an issue once again, but we're gonna go with it, you know? Well, Why is it an issue? Well, worst case scenario, we're gonna run a rope, see about running a rope out the window, Marie's idea, this was a great idea, yeah. so the kids can pull the bells, okay? We're undone. Uh, Bob Walden, the building commissioner, is going to get the rope. He's going to make test it to make sure it works um, <laughs> at the beginning of next week. His, his he had his mom is not well, and he has doctor's appointments um, for the rest of this week. But he he will get on to it Monday. Um, if we can't use the inside, if we can't use the inside, the reason why we have to figure out some safety barrier that doesn't uh, isn't is stable that will keep the kids away from the low um, railing railing, but doesn't cause it is is not heavy because the weight load issue. So it it's kind of a conundrum. Carolyn, um, yes, um, wasn't a fire marshal or fire person supposed to be stay stay in the building? Uh, wasn't that mentioned? And uh, yeah, don't we have adults sit on the lower railing as, you know, instead of a barrier, just have a few adults sit and say, don't go in this area? Well, the insurance company wants to see a barrier, but we yeah. also can't have weight with the barrier, which would be. Well, how know. much weight are we talking about? I mean, they used to fill those pews with people. You're talking to. 800, 900,000 pounds. Um, here's an idea. You know, the, the teachers decided they were going to make a garland, but I had bought a chicken net, which is, uh, it's supposed to be dog proof. I'm not sure, sure how much you all push it against, but it would be a definite barrier. It is, if I remember right, um, 40 inches by 50 feet. We can string it across. Yep. It's durable. We could stabilize it and just block off that particular area. Well, like I said, it's going to be a work in progress. So okay. run the, run that idea past them. Yes. It's a I garden have... net that's supposed to withstand wild animals. I okay. was going for what could what could hold three hundred fifty bells. I was looking for something strong. We so, can put braces on the two ends and right in the middle and str just string the the mesh screen on that. Yeah, that's an idea. Actually, that might work. The, the other it thing I'll tell you is it's a plastic mesh, but it was me it's meant to be like a strong, not, not deer strong, right. but strong enough to be a, a form of a barrier. Uh, run that by whoever is- um, It's Bob. Um, is giving the yeah. okay. See, yeah. well, run it by them. That's an option because I already have it in my garage. Okay. Yeah. We'll All keep right. working on it. Yeah. The, the other thing, Carolyn, with, with pulling the bell from the outside, if there's, unless there's a roller or something that will, what, what, what has to happen when to do that is you're pulling that rope off center and it's going to go off center over the ledge. And nobody from the bottom below on the ground is going to be able to pull that rope plus the bell across that ledge, yeah. unless there's a wheeled roller or something that allows it the to be pulled and not, you know, a pulley or something or other, yeah. uh, because it, it, it won't work. It's it, it just it's just friction on the on the. Going to have to be a double pulley system. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
Because right. it, otherwise, it, it's just there's so much friction on the sill of that window. Mm -hmm. I already talked to somebody about this. We did, when we were up there. I think it was the building inspector. Yeah, Bob probably. Um, please. And, but then the kids can't see all the graffiti up there. Right. Well, one of the things I thought of is we could take pictures of their graffiti and have them hanging, you know, blown up pictures and have them hanging down on the first floor somewhere, you know, on the, just on the doorway, near the doorway. Um, because we do, I mean, that's part of what's really cool is the, yeah. all the graffiti, the historical graffiti. I know that sounds so dumb, but I do remember, I mean, even my kids, they remember my dad's graffiti up in the uh, tower in the bell at Northfield Mount, at the Mount Hermon campus, you know, the chapel bell tower, all the kids used to write stuff. And my, my boys would go up and look for my dad's signature and stuff. And, you know, I never did it, but my, my, my dad did. And then my boys did. So that was kind of, you know, that was really cool for them. So I absolutely get the whole graffiti thing. And, um, so we got to we got to keep working on this, yes. not giving up, not giving up, just saying that <sighs> it's a work in progress. Diane knows. And we well, still I'm have, and we still have potentially the protests happening, but, um, uh, Marie, did you reach out to them at all? Well, I, I, it, I'm, I'm a little perplexed because I wrote to the raging grannies, uh, according to their website and explained you know, all the stuff we were doing to make sure the kids were safe. And they wrote back and they said, we have no idea who this person is that wrote to you, but we're going to be at some gay pride event someplace else on, on May 6th. So um, I don't know if I didn't get the envelope. So I don't know if there was a return address or not for that particular person. There was not Chris, there was not a return envelope. There was not, it was completely blank. blank. So I wrote to the raging grannies and explained the whole thing. And, and they just said th they weren't planning on coming and they didn't know who Kay Stein was. So I don't know, unless we want to try to track that person down some more. Just let it go. Just let it go. We're just going to have. I appreciate you doing um, already what you did. It's usually you just once you it's better not to engage them as a town official. Yeah. I, well, yeah, I know, but I just I just wrote and I said, you know, I agree that we want our kids to be safe, but we're all parents and grandparents and we all have, you know, I ran a, a summer camp for years. Safety was my number one issue, you know, so it's not like we're, but just that the information they were hearing was not correct. Right. The place wasn't filled with asbestos and mold, you know. Marie, print up everything you wrote and if this pa person actually shows up, Hand it to them personally. Yeah, okay, I can you know, do that's that. That's an idea. Just have have it printed, and then we have. Since you have no other way how to reach them, they they did yeah. this anonymously. Uh, you did a very good write up of all I read. You gave a researched uh, response, so uh, just have it at the ready. And if that person is around, just say here, this one's for you. Please read. Yeah. Well. Um, I have down here the to do list is to we got to look at the pulley system as a backup. We got to have that um, worked out. Um, I will talk to Kurt Siemens at the fire station to make sure that we have a fire watch, which is because that for a temporary if you if you don't have lights and exit signs and all that, you have to have a fire, you know, a live fire watch. So um, and I know Bob had reached out to Kurt Siemens, so I'll see if he's available still. And um, then we'll work on this netting idea. I don't, I don't know if that could be successful, but uh, I think what what the insurance company is looking for is something that the kids can't go through. But if if we can get it hooked up, and we hold it, and then we have an adult yeah. up there. I, at least one adult, then I, I I just don't see that this could be an issue, but. You know, I could I can talk to uh, John over at FCAT and I don't know if there's some way that he could put a camera up there and have like a, an iPad or something down there where they could be doing some panning of the graffiti so people could be outside and see it. Oh, that's an idea. That's wonderful. Yeah. I just, 
that might be better than the actual picture blow ups. Yeah, I can ask. Uh, I'll ask John if because I, I I'm asking them to do the whole that weekend. I'll do the talk on Sunday, but Friday and Saturday I can't handle that. So I'm asking them to do it. But I'll I'll present the issue to John and and Kevin, and they love playing with toys. So you know if they have like a a big laptop or an iPad or something, and they could do live streaming to it. You know, okay. then people. Perfect. see the i, I you just can have a couple people up there right you can have adults up there right oh yeah 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 this is just i mean we went up there and looked at it the you know diane yeah. peter went up and looked at it with bob yeah, yeah. It, it wasn't i mean it's not like you can't go up there it's just is it oh, going up there us as is looking at it versus open to the public you know this is we're not really open to the public so that's you know what it's or they and they might be able to do it ahead of time too and then just put it on a loop and just could have it out there you know on a loop and and run it so people can see the see what it looks like yeah hey carolyn i'll i'll go up and have a look i i think i can jerry rig something for a screen up there that the, we'll put it up and it'll be solid okay it just can't really be any weight because of the you know, you just we got to be careful of the weight load. I mean, what's four or five two by fours? I mean, that's all you really need. I know, I know, I know. So, what barriers is what we need? Uh, well, I mean, basically, if you took a two by four and screwed <laughs> it to the to the wall, four of them, and strung the the netting between them. Yeah, it would be yeah, hard, for us, be hard for us to get forward. anybody to go Not through. Too bad, even first trip or something. Yeah. 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 Just have either to the, either the netting or uh, chicken wire. Yeah. Well, chicken netting is better, safer. Chicken wire you can get cut on or whatever, could get broken. Well, why don't we put a metal mesh up and put 5,000 volts through it? Just, you know. <laughs> That'll that'll throw everybody backwards. Peter, 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 Peter. This this is being recorded. Somebody might hear that and get the wrong idea. Yeah. Okay. For what you say? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's just well. Anyway. Yeah. You're not promoting. We're trying. We're trying. That's all we're doing. Was just trying and troubleshooting. Yep. We're so, working on it. Okay. Uh, so and we're, Bob, we're Bob is is being really cooperative, and it it just. It's just too bad. It's, it's like I said, his mom is not feeling really well, and um, so he's he's taking some time off to make sure she he can take her to the doctor. So yeah. he's gonna get on it at the beginning of the week, and so we'll sort it. We'll have something sorted out, obviously, because I think it's a wonderful. This whole thing is so wonderful, and it's morphed into a wonderful event. And I, I just have to thank Diane for being so um enthusiastic and it's made the kids be enthusiastic and so just we're getting into it we're getting people involved that would not have been involved and the and likelihood of them being around for the 400th is fabulous i'm i'm so excited about this even if just this this thing is just this little activity is huge they'll remember it you know so um, and right marie that's the thing of it. I mean, you you got an event that really people kids are going to remember this, mm -hmm. and it they'll is. you know, and so, well, anyway, I think well, they'll remember it because the friends of Deerfield are giving them free ice cream. Let's face it. <laughs> oh, you know, it doesn't matter. Whatever gets gets them enthusiastic. It's socializing. It's about socializing right. in their it's town. Having a good time. You know? Right. No expectations other than. Having a chance to ring a bell and talk I was to just friends. Wondering if um, I was going to ask, that I know there's not much time left, but is there any possibility we can get like key change or some little thing that we could give out to every kid that participates? Well, with? That, that's the bunch of the buttons. That's the button. Right, right. But I it's meant buttons that had something else on it. Do you know? Um, I mean, as far as the ones that make the bells of the grammar school? Well, just th they come to that day that actually ring the bell. Yeah, well, that's what the pin, that's what the pins what are the for. Everybody are. that everybody that rings the bell gets that button. And only they all, only the people who ring the bell get the button. Oh, so it's okay. rare. So so, but if you made the bell, are you going to give them a button too? No. 
that's no. something I've thought about also, that there should be. Because, you know, uh, some, some of the kids just can't, take you know, you know I, the parents might not want to take them or something. But if they come over from the elementary school, we should give them some little some little token. Is there something that we can order with 350 on it between now and next week? This not in another week. Uh, yeah. And I can't make. I can't make another 300 buttons that say I made a bell. I know, no, no, I know. I just was wondering. Stickers or something, but. It's okay. I just, I've, I feel like if kids walk away with something though, but ice cream is good. Ice cream is good. But I, I totally know what you were talking about, Carolyn. I'd sort of come into my mind and it's like, yeah. Well, they got the bell ultimately to take home and they can show them you were going to restring them at town hall. So they'll. Yeah, we're going to hang it at the town hall somewhere. Diane and I will figure out where we can do it. You're out. Yeah. Well, they'll have the bell as remembrance. You can give it back to them. They can come back in the fall and get their bells. Yeah. I tell you what, why don't you have the select board sign the bell? Yeah, <laughs> all right well that will take a few weeks <laughs> you know, just have a branding iron or a sticker you could put on the bell you know when you give it back but i don't know anyways let's move on With With, the postage stamp. are you when when they make the bells are you having them put their name on it i had mentioned it in the teacher original correspondence that to have them write their name. And I think I mentioned the grade, just to make it easy to find your bell if you want. You know what? We could pack them up and put them into the time capsule too. That's a lot of bells. Then we could we could just put them in an envelope and have them in the historic commission yeah. mobilia. How's that? But but get the kids to put their names on them so that in 50 years we can pull them out again. <laughs> okay, Diane. That's a good uh, yeah, I was I was actually considering just giving them back to them as their own. That would be one of their own souvenirs of the bell or the bell project or whatever like that. Yeah. You know, but I don't know. I I think we should keep them. And then and then we'll pack them up some way. They'll keep for 50 years. Jeez, I have paperwork from 50 years ago. Will they stick to each other? They're going to be laminated. To be... If they don't get over hot. Yeah, if they don't get overheated, we could keep them somewhere. Unless they're in environmentally special stable condition. You know, they might be, they might stick to each other. I'm not sure. But we'll talk about that later. Let's right. move on to another subject. And anyways, after the Founders Day, which we're working on the next day, as you said, Gary said they're going to have the postmark Sunday and Gary Sanderson will be giving a talk again. Um, or not again, he'll be giving another talk or of, of the Deerfield talk series. Yeah. I'm saying it backwards. That's backwards. So. <laughs> anyways. Um, so that's thank you for the Deerfield lecture series, but that's, is, that's thank fine. you, thank you. <laughs> All righty. Yep. Yeah. Any other questions on Founders Day? I think we're good. I think we can resolve this this issue with a balcony. Yeah. Um. Yes. We'll tr we're going to try. It was it was mainly about the kids. That's what's gonna mainly be gonna be about. And yes. it'd be very nice to have a lot of parents and people, even people just walking by, driving by, whatever. Um, that would be nice in itself. But it's mainly about the children and ringing the bell and making bells. Part of what we were talking about is having a parent accompany a student, a, a child. So. You might talk to the insurance company and say, you know, a lot of these kids are going to be chaperoned. Yeah. They're not going to be running free. Yeah. Yeah. They're not. And uh, in fact, some of the really young kids may need the parents' help. I'll be up there. I'll, I, I know how to work the rope and stuff. And so 
I can I can do it one handed. So if you get a thirty pound oh, you know, first first year old, you know, and I I don't want to see him going up the rope <laughs> because the bells is more than they do. So you know, but I can help them ring the bells up there. So I I, I think it, we can make it safe. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll, I'm, I got a note here to call Kurt Siemens. That's the first thing is to make sure that the fire group is on, on board. Yep, absolutely. Or, and then we'll see what we can come up with. It will be satisfactory. Okay. okay. And, then, and then we'll have to but, but be thinking in the back of your mind for the pulley system just in case. Okay, Peter? That that. I didn't realize that we had to have a pulley system, but that makes sense. Well, it, it, it's just, you know, I thought about this one as soon as he mentioned it, and, and I'm watching the rope come from the ceiling over the sill of the window. And I know that's not, it's, it's just going to create so much friction, you couldn't pull it from down below. Yeah. And, and it's not going to go back on itself either. I mean, yeah. this is a, it's a, it's the, the swing of the, but think of the thing, the bell's on a swivel and it swings. And so if you're off center with that bell, you're going to interrupt that pull and swing to begin with. Um, so it, I'm not even sure if you got a pulley, it would work all that well, but we'll, we'll check it out. Okay. Well, we just need to be able to <clears throat> pull this off somehow. So let's keep our options open and keep doing it. And I will make some phone calls tomorrow. I'm writing notes down here. Okay. Okay. Uh, all right. So on the new business, uh, updates from Friends of Deerfield? Yeah, so just um, a couple things because we already covered some. We covered the post parade at Deerfield Elementary School, the time, et cetera. So we're pretty clear on that. Um, we covered May 6th um founders day weekend where we don't really have to change things around because oh that's may 7th rather because marie has it covered for any kids that show up in that 1 to 2 p.m um time frame yeah. so so that was one of the things there's a general question here as to what we're going to do between the 350th committee and the friends of deerfield in terms of general advertising going forward we initially put forth a draft of that one page brochure for the 350th celebration weekend of the 17th and 18th of June. And we now can update that with the correct venues. We didn't, we had to put that on hold for a while because we didn't have the venues for fireworks, post parade, all that stuff. And that could be available by the end of this week or the weekend. And, um, and then we could prove it by email, I think at that point. Um, and and we could start using that in terms of flyers at businesses, in terms of you know cards, postcards to get at the transfer station, um, in terms of seeing what it would look like to get you know a right sized version of that into like the Greenfield Recorder or what have you. But I don't know where people are at in terms of an integrated approach to promoting. Um, all the activities in June, um, we seem to be getting the word out about the speaker series and Founders Day, but we need to figure out what are we doing, you know, integrated approach for all the events that are gonna come in the middle of June. Well, Holly, you've been working on the advertising part of it for the parade. I mean, can you just work with Chris? Uh, just. Oh, Kelly, sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm I'm all for it. Whether it's, you know, I've been advertising through Facebook, the chicken barbecue and stuff like that. I just haven't had the details of the other things. So I'm all for reaching out to the recorder slash gazette and getting information once we have an ad or something to show them. And then however other we can funnel that information out. Um, okay. We got to make sure all the websites are up to date with stuff as well. Yep. Um, yeah, I mean, if somebody wants to send me as soon as they get it, or whether it's that flyer or whatever, I'll update ASAP. 
Chris, where are the fireworks going to be this week? Um, okay, <laughs> so so the fire marshal has approved launching them from the southernmost field of Treehouse Brewing Company. So the best viewing areas will be Frontier Regional School and Treehouse Brewing Company itself. So, um, so uh, and um, you know, I, I'm just finalizing detailed paperwork of insurances and endorsements and all this kind of stuff that you can imagine has to happen. But Thank I think you guys for working so much trying to figure out a site. I think it'll all be wrapped up within a couple of days. There was some have, little, little have, go around this morning, little go around this morning in terms of um, addendums to insurance policies, et cetera. Um, I have to say, Chris has worked so hard on this. Every thing that pops in this fireworks, we should be making sure we thank Chris. Everybody worked hard, but Chris really, really put a lot of effort in this and the, the finagling and the back and forth has been so hard, unreal, unreal. No Can one- Can we have, a, is there a fireworks that says Chris? No, it should be. <laughs> No, that's likely to come down and burn me up. But anyway, um, no, so it's it's uh, it's good. It's all going to be wrapped up. So I, I feel confident that any um, publicity or any uh, publications or any advertising or any promotions we do now for the entire weekend, it's all pinned down and we can go forward starting May 1st. Excellent. That's That'll be yeah. good. Chris, save all your paperwork. We're going to need you in 50 years. <laughs> I think we killed them on the 350. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think the 58, oh I think the 58 became 88 pretty quickly on this one. But uh, and so uh uh so that's that one. The other one was this whole concept that you know I, I brought up the issue of can we find out if our donors have been invited or have said they want to participate in the parade so that we don't duplicate communications with them. But there's a general issue of often when you have big events like this, you know, you have this on the website, you have this who's coming to the parade, who's participating in the parade. Because what it often does is it, first of all, it honors the people that have already signed up. Second of all, there's other people potentially similar in farming or other other businesses or stuff they say well if they're going to be there i'm going to be there right Seems. and then the, the third aspect is people that want to come watch the parade they start getting excited about it because they, they oh man they're going to have these bands they're going to have these floats they're going to have this so i wonder if we shouldn't be starting uh who's coming to the parade or who's participating in the parade and get it out there on social media and the website <laughs> Sure. I mean, there's, there's four, what, four volunteers, right, Rocky, doing our best. Uh, as soon as we can get through that information, uh, certainly see about getting it up there. Yeah, I just think it would create more excitement around it, right? And and let people know this is going to be a big deal. And I want to be part of it. Right. And who's, who's doing floats? What floats are going to be there? You know, I think that's what people all want to know, so... Yeah, and it's a lot of information we're just trying to, to get through at this point, so. Um, and I guess the other thing that we'd like to know, because it ties in with what we're doing with the Gripco uh, bus company, is they're graciously offering us buses if we need to uh, um, <clears throat> pool people, you know, bus them from South Deerfield to Old Deerfield on Sunday the 18th. I know, uh, we had already to, reached out to them about that. Yeah. Uh, about the parade day. Okay. Okay. So where are we at with that? Because it's not, it's not totally clear to us. Uh, obviously our primary interest initially was having buses and bus drivers to go from South Deerfield to Old Deerfield and back on Sunday to manage traffic and parking up at Old Deerfield, because that's a big concern of Deerfield Academy. It's a concern of the police department, um, et cetera. So have we have we pinned down what we want to do with them on Saturday and where the parade might end or might not end? 
Uh, as for the development of them of using the space, I'm not sure where we are with that, but we had spoken to them prior about using some of their buses as shuttles for parade marchers back yeah. and forth. And then they're also going to be in the parade. They're going to have a bus in the parade. So those were two of the things that we had talked to them and they had agreed to. Um, I don't know if Holly has reached out about the use of the space for parking or the end of the parade yet. Yeah, so I mean it ties in also to the fireworks because the town of Deerfield, the police department, the fire department, uh, and the friends of Deerfield had to make a commitment with Pelican that their parking lot would be totally off limits. Mm -hmm. So that is in writing as a commitment. Yeah, well, we knew they were out. So um, we were just planning on using Frontier at this moment. And it's great that Grip Ghost has agreed. And we were, were super excited to hear that. I just don't know if anybody has reached out since. I know Cindy from our committee had been the contact. OK. So we'll wait to hear from you on that. Yeah. Um, and I did not reach out. It would have been my first choice to reach out to Yankee Candle headquarters in terms of relocating their buses there. Um, just because that also would tie in with Sunday morning. If we shuttle, that might be a good meeting point, right? And so leave a couple buses there and use them on Sunday. Okay. Shuttling from there in terms of meeting point where you could park cars. And so I have not done that. Um, okay. And so that... So where you would put a dozen buses that aren't being used um, at, at one or more points during Saturday, right? We're spanning from early in the morning to the evening. Where you put those buses is, at least from the Friends of Deerfield, we didn't pin that down. Okay. All right. We left that open. And, you know, Diane Gripko told me that, look, Chris, these are details that can be worked out later in May and early June. Um, but, but we don't need to solve that right now, but we're committed to helping you guys out. Okay. No, we appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, Chris, that's, Thank that's those a wrap for any, any other items. Yeah. Just you're under new business right now. No, yeah. I had something else on their mural. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we received an email from Judith. I, I'm not, I may say her last name, Inglace, Inglacy. I don't know. She lives in Leverett. She's an artist. She makes ceramic tile murals for public commissions. She did Leverett's 250th uh, at the entrance of the Leverett Library, a small mural um, on the Leverett Village Coop. Um, and then she's done some for grants through the Mass Cultural Council and a whole bunch of other stuff. She wondered if we wanted a Deerfield mural. For the 350th is oh. this an expense i yeah i had asked her that and Do you know she said it's through grants like you know the cultural council has grants yeah but, um do you know how much she would be uh i know um she attached some images which are in the 350th email but um she had suggested the brick wall to the left of the town hall in which she could frame in wood, it would be three wide by four high. If you approve the art project in site, I would approach local banks and the Deerfield Cultural Council for fall funding. In the fall for funding, sorry, I read that wrong. Um, let's think about it. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I think that's really good. The Cultural Council members are really great members. We have um, Emily, Gaylord, Annie Curtis, Roberta LaBarbera, Olivia Leone, Denise Schwartz, Pat Ryan. I mean, they're all excellent, really peppy people. So I, I think this is really, Kelly, if you could send um, me the email, I'll pass it on to Pat Ryan. Okay. And um, see if she can, she, she could pursue it. And if we could see what it looks like. Yeah, I'll send the, I'll forward the email where she had attached images. Already. So this would be a, a permanent mural, mural? Yes. Yeah. Yep. I think, I think that's a great idea. Yeah, it's really cool what she does.
So I don't think we need a vote on that, but it seemed like a make the contacts first and see if you know we get more specifics, and then if we if we do need a an approval, um, we can do it like okay. next time. I mean, I, she's obviously not planning to do it if she's not going to seek funds before the fall, so uh, it won't yeah, be, it won't be right off anyway. It'll take a, a little while. Um, I think the, she missed this this year's cycle so the next cycle would be in the fall but if we i mean i think it's a great idea and they, usually there is cultural council money in the budget i don't have the budget right now but for that i don't know if what's in the account we would have to look that up but i don't think i have it but uh, uh, just send it to me and i'll we'll get more information for next month okay that's a good We'll put that on the agenda for next month, okay, Peter? Yep. Yep. I had uh, an item I wanted to just bring up. At town meeting the other night, I started formulating a plan with, with somebody from uh, South County EMS to put together something for the fall in terms of having some CPR and first aid training uh, for people, call it Save a Neighbor Day. Uh, maybe do, you know, I, I've been thinking about it kind of the last couple of days and maybe have, you know, one session for seniors, things that seniors need to know, you know, about each other or whatever. Uh, one for students and, uh, you know, one for, you know, other other kinds of things, you know, basic first aid and stuff, but call it Save a Neighbor Day as a way of sort of ending up the, the 350th and looking towards the future because there needs to be a lot more and then showing people how to use those automatic AED machines. Cause yep. you, you know, so if you need to use one of those you don't want to have to stop to read directions, you know, if, but if you've seen it used once then it would be a little bit easier for people to, to do. Cause I see they're getting distributed around town, various places. So. Yeah, no, we haven't posted around. Um, yeah, I, so once I, once I have an, a, a, a plan and a budget then I'll, I'll bring it back to you all and see what, what it would cost, so. That's really great. Uh, identifying um, uh, stroke, you know, the signs of a stroke, that kind of thing. I think that's excellent. Um, okay. Any other uh, any other items? Do we need to discuss the next meeting day or? We do. That was that. Yeah. I mean, that's. What did I do? Oh, right here. Schedule for next meeting. Um, well, we can't do the 29th. It's Memorial Day. <laughs> so, um, I, do we I don't know. Chris, Chris is at home. Chris is doing this from home, right? Chris, you're not in the office, right? Right. I do have a rough idea of what dates might be available in May, if you have any suggestions. I think we had, uh, I think we had penciled in the 15th of May. Okay. I think that should work. I'll let you know if I find anything to the contrary, but I don't think we have anything scheduled for um, them right now. Uh, uh, the parade, the parade is meeting pretty much every Monday, starting oh, in May. Is. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, are they doing the yeah, I think they are doing the 15th. Okay, so um, is it the 30th, uh, the day after Memorial? Oh, well, I think we should. I think we need to find some time during the week, and we're going to need at least two meetings before this June event. Okay. I, I, I would feel um, better if we had two, two um, events. I mean, the finance committee is not meeting anymore because our you know we're done town meeting so um tuesday the 9th and tuesday the 23rd does that ring any bells for you chris uh not at all i think those two should be okay so how about the 9th and how about the 23rd i'm ready um i may be i might be late Okay. So May 9th or May 20 and May 23rd. Yes. Just to, just to check in. Yeah. All right. I, I unless you feel like we don't need to do the 9th because everyone's beat from this 6th and 7th, but we could do 
Uh, well, the, the 16th is a library forum. And, and the 30th, I'm hesitant to do the 30th because that's only two weeks out. I feel like we could keep the 30th available if we felt well, if, like we do, if we do the 23rd, what's the first week in June? Because that's going to be a, probably our last meeting before the big weekend. It would be this day, or Tuesday. What was that, Rocky? It'll be uh, in June. Uh, the first Tuesday is June 6th. Yep. I don't think we should push it any further out than that. We, we're going to need a week to if we find anything that we got to really move on. Yep. So, you know, June six, Rocky. Yeah. Okay. These are all these are all Tuesdays. Yeah. yeah. Because Kelly said the parade committee is meeting Mondays. Right. Yeah. We yeah. Well, that's good because if 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 the parade committee meets on the Monday, then will be updated that much more, uh, that much more quickly uh, with a meeting on a Tuesday. Okay, so what you're saying is the 23rd of May and June 6th. I'm saying 9, 23, um, and 6. Oh, okay, so you still wanna meet the 9th, okay. Do we do we wanna do that? I, I'm, I'm, I'm open. I think we'll have completed the uh, Founders Day weekend um, part of it. Do we anticipate anything that? Well, let's let's look at it this way. What what do we have on the agenda that we needed to work out? There was some after uh, event. Uh... Well, Susie would have more information on um, you know her activities. She could give us an update um, on the after events and. Um, whatever the parade committee wanted to convey to us, because they will have met on the 8th. Right, Kelly? Yeah. yeah. Okay. We could, we could try and make them just short meetings. I just don't want to make sure, I want to make sure that we have enough meetings so that we don't get caught in the end with something that we're not anticipating or something we're thinking about, but somebody already dealt with it. You know, and there's a lot of moving parts here. Yeah. Uh, so the 9th, the 23rd of May, and the and the 6th of June. Chris, right. could, you just, could you just put that down? On the yes, I just emailed it to myself, so I remember to put it on the big calendar of my office tomorrow. Okay, thank you so much. Sure. Um, I appreciate you doing this tonight, too. Absolutely. Um, um, the only other thing that I just want on one of our agendas we can wait until after the parade weekend, you know, fireworks weekend. Um, I, I, I just wanted to pursue with PVMA, you know, they were gonna do sort of like Oktoberfest follow up from the Polish and Irish and all the immigration work that they did, you know, a few years ago and yeah. do like a beer fest kind of, you know, weekend, you know, weekend outdoor event in the fall. And I, I just wanted us to make sure that we did that because I, th I think, you know, their lawn, they were going to do it outside on their lawn, like they do on some of their other events. And um, it seemed like a really good way to wrap up our year as well, I think, because the focus has been on, you know, the the more recent more recent history, like the 19th and 20th century history versus the early colonial history. So um it seemed it seemed like a really good way to finish the and I I haven't talked to um Tim about that, but I I thought we could put something together with yes. him after, after we get through the parade fireworks kind of thing. Yeah I wouldn't mind being involved with that one Carolyn either. Okay. Okay, I just I just felt like it was really. I mean, they did some such outstanding work a few years ago, and um, it seemed like a really great thing to follow up. Yeah, well, there's a, I can follow up a little bit too if you want or earlier on. Um, just so you know, the oral history program is still moving a still moving along. We're doing oh. interviews with elderly residents and people that even live in Florida. 
So um, we're getting photographs coming in on families. And, um, but Jean Soika, Alex's mother, is on the board for the Polish Genealogy Society. So she's going to have a poster at the Founders Day. And we, uh, and she's, she's <clears throat> going to have, she had a poster for PVMA at the speakers, uh, at the lecture series, and she will continue to have those. So we're going to have in, I, what I'm doing is looking at sort of November for sort of a wrap up session in Omega for multiple hours where we can bring the oral history stuff together. Uh, we can tie it in with what PVMA is working on maybe or earlier on. Uh, but I, I think you're gonna have a, a, a variety of things that in the fall we can pull together, particularly for the history for the immigrant communities. Okay, I, I think that's fantastic. I think. Do you, want, do you want me to follow up with Tim and just ask him sure, what, sure. what they're planning? He, this is what he had brought this up a yeah. few months ago, and I, yeah. I just haven't. I we're so you. focused on the firework that we, yeah. I didn't really have time to pursue with him more. Well, I know they're actually writing some pretty large grants to deal with immigrant issues as well. Well, they, they, I think people were very excited about the work they did prior, and this was built, would be building off of it, and, and it would be a festive fall, you know, a, just a really beautiful, if you had a beautiful fall day, it would, uh, how fun, you know, and if we had to, he has a space, we could bring it indoors if it was bad weather, so I, I felt like we could do something, and, and people would be very interested. Yeah, I think so, too. Hey, Rocky. I got a question about the uh, time capsule. <clears throat> All right. Does anybody know what the time capsule was buried from 50 years ago? Somebody said it's outside the library. I have no idea. Thank you for bringing that up, Rocky, because I've had somebody comment that they were wondering if we were going to open it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, anybody know where it is so we can dig it up? And when are we going to uh, open it? <laughs> And secondly, when we fill this one, do we have a timeline when we're, we're go, when we're going to bury this one and where? So, just well, we are building a new library, so we can put this one in near the foundation of. Whoops! <laughs> I hit something. Yeah, we're hoping that we put some kind of marker on it so somebody knows where it is. But yeah, but people um, have asked me if, if we're going to dig up the one from fifty yeah. years ago. I, I have no idea. I wasn't. Oh, I wasn't. We asked Facebook. Does anybody know where it is? We see. Oh, well, somebody, somebody mentioned outside yeah. the library, but didn't have oh. a exact spot or anything. Is there any pictures? Anything uh, in the newspaper showing yeah. us uh, burying it? I was just going to say, isn't there? Isn't there a record of it being buried? You know, we've got a bunch of newspapers from fifty years ago, so we can look through those. People have been donating them. So, as Gary we'll, we'll see if he knows. Yeah. There must be somebody from that was around. Maybe I can, you know what? Let me just make a note. I will, I'll call Dave Wolfram because his family was active in a lot of stuff yeah. here in the, um, you know, the 300s. So uh, I will call him and, and Bob Decker. Uh, Bob Decker might know where it is. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and Bob Decker. So if if nobody can find anything, I, I I bet those two guys might be able to think of it. Um, well, maybe one of the things to do is when we dig, when we figure out where the old one is, we can just cover the hole over and put the new one in the same hole, and at least <laughs> and, put, <laughs> and put a marker there. Yeah, I know. I don't, yeah, I mean, the two we talked about this because you know we're trying to get dimensions when we put the Pelican case around it, et cetera. Um, it doesn't need to be in a cement vault or not. And so, but the two logical places that were discussed so far is the library, the Tilton Library, and maybe at the Bloody Brook Monument in that piece of land. That's that's a good idea too. Yeah, little Tom Parker. I was even outside the DPW uh, because that building's brand new. It's going to be around 50 years from now. 
So, yeah, nobody's going to finance another one. Yeah. <laughs> Not for another hundred years. But in, in terms of people walking around your kind of campus environment there. Yeah, uh, I, I understand that. Those yeah. are the probably, they can actually read the monument, well, the plaque or whatever is put up and stuff like that. You could put a little plaque on it, just say time capsule site or something or other. Yeah. Just, yeah. Oh, I would think we would want to, because who's going to remember? Well, we didn't do it 50 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you um, want to get really historical, one of the things that they did in the town is the town boundaries are marked with stones. And it was required every five years for the selectmen to walk the boundary with the adjacent town and to confirm that that's where the boundary was. And then on the stone, they either carved a zero or a five to indicate that they had been there in the appropriate time. So we could put a 300 on there and 350 and let them go with a 400. <laughs> okay. Oh, gosh, one more thing. This is more complicated sometimes than we think. <laughs> well, and know, we need to... We'll spread this out over the year and it won't be so bad. I mean, I think the two big things for us have been the Founders Day, particularly for Diane and, and uh, you know, the big event on uh, in June. But there's other events trickling out throughout the year and, and uh, we'll, we'll take care of them. It's all right. I know. I think we need so, uh, to close the uh, Friends of Deerfield meeting. Do we have any other business for Friends of Deerfield? Stan? I, I motion we adjourn. Stan? Stan? Okay, Stan. all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, we're adjourning at uh, 820. Well, do you want to follow suit? Yeah, I'll make a yep. motion to adjourn. Here I second. All right, all those in favor? And then Aye. Aye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, everybody. Thank Carolyn, you. just uh, one thing. I talked to or Chris. Send me a note. The uh, uh, all the files, the historical files, are on Chris's computer. Oh, good, good. Uh, I know Trevor wanted that to make sure we put a link onto our web page. Um, so when Chris has time, he he sure. can make a link under the select board. You know, yeah, I'd be happy to take care of that. Yeah, or actually, the historic commission should have this. Should be a link under the historic commission. I'm not sure if the historic commission has a link. Do they? I think they do. I'll double check that. Yeah, but, I think it's actually. Yeah, it'll definitely go in one or the other. Yeah, I I would put it on the historic commission actually, not the select board. But okay. um, is and that okay, so you, Peter? Yeah, and just so you know about the documents, they're all cleaned um they're all we've done an inventory of all the volumes the the bound volumes of, of documents um i have yet to go through the smaller boxes but those are uh, and we have the uh, archival boxes that the bigger volumes are going to have to be put in so we're we're moving closer to moving them up to pvma well um we uh, there, we haven't voted yet uh, a lease, but we we're there's consensus to have the Mosquito Pioneer Valley Mosquito District move into the building, so it won't be vacant. So you could move your records out when you know the records can go whenever, and it won't matter, Peter, from from our insurance point of view, because you know we had curative doing the PCR testing until December 31st, and then. We have been using it for storage of records, and then now we'll have, you know, um, the Mosquito District move in. So the building will not, not be vacant, which is well, what it, I was worried about. Yeah, I mean, it's, the, the safe is leaking. Let's, I, I, I go in there every other day and I throw out about four gallons of water. So the floor is half covered with water before I do it each time. So I think part of that is it, it's just got a high water table right now. Um, but I would like to get the volumes out of there. I did talk to both the water district and the fire district initially. Both of them went, mm -hmm, and I haven't heard who from either one of them. So I'll 
I, I think I'm not going to worry it about just, their records. Is it, just the, um, is it just the South Deerfield Water District or is it the Old Deerfield Fire District Water District too? Because the old Deerfield, the old the old Deerfield, it's the old Deerfield Fire District. It's Deerfield Fire District Water District is the is the water district from Old Deerfield. I have volumes for both the water fire district and for the fire district and for the water district. Okay, so you have for because we have two water districts and two fire districts. Well. Maybe somebody needs to come over and sort those. I mean, they're all organized together, the, the, the books, but you're probably looking at 80 to 100 volumes. Okay. Uh, you know what? Let me let me call, I'll call the South Deerfield Water District and, um, and the old district, water district. I'll have the water districts and the fire districts. I'll just make four phone calls because there's there are four different entities. Okay. Well, it, I noticed that some of the books had fire and water district on the bindings, and then some of them fire had, fire okay. and water district. It, there's fire district in the old Deerfield water district. I think it's I think it's the uh, old Deerfield fire district. Or it's a Deerfield Fire District water supply, and then there's Old Deerfield Fire. Old well, Deerfield Fire is separate from the Fire Water District up there. It's, it, I mean, it's a separate entity. It's just that it has fire still in its name, even though it's a water district. So that's well, why. I'm, you know, I'm, as I say, I've I've divided out the, the the Fire District Water District volumes. I've not included them in the town documents. Okay, because you're right. They're, Those are they're, separate. they're collectively filed separately. So, right. but I, I didn't I didn't know enough of how to split those out from there. So if they're going to two entities or four entities or three entities or whatever. Oh, well, there's a South Deerfield Water District and the South Deerfield Fire District. Those will say South Deerfield. Uh, I think they just say Deerfield. Then fire, they, Deerfield Fire District. I, I'm, somebody needs somebody say, with the no needs to look at the blind. Okay, because if they just say Deerfield Fire District, then that means it's Old Deerfield. Okay. Um, and it's the. I, Is I don't. There some know, kind of years involved when when changes occurred, or you know what? I'm there is, but I I have to I'd have to call and find out to tell you the truth because it's one of those things that um I, I I'm confused. Um you know I can't give you the correct answer. Because well, th these volumes typically go from the 19 mid 20s to this, the late 50s. I think I think the fire it was the fire district that ran the water district. And then it split off in the 30s or 40s, something like that. But it kept fire in the water district name. So it's confusing because people think it's the fire, you know, it's fire department. It's not the fire department. It's the water district. They are separate now. But I, I believe it was in the 30s and 40s. It was similar to the time frame when we got the sewer in South That Georgia. was 1937. Yeah, it, it was around that time frame when all these things were happening. You know, these entities split up and, you know, the, it's like they yeah. modernized all at the same time. Well, the I mean, the thing that's nice about it is they're all in annual bound volumes with labels, and I've sorted them out by year. So if it just says Deerfield Fire District, all the... Or, they're all together and they're sequenced okay. by years. I'm, I'll make some phone calls and see what is what and um, try to get them out of there pretty soon. Because i that's what I was worried about was more water in the spring here. Well, everything's off the floor. Yep. And everything's, you know, the, worth anything is two shelves up from there. So unless you've got a major inundation, nothing is going to get physically wet. Okay.
but it 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 is damp wet in there yeah okay well we'll we can move them out uh because there won't be enough time you know the mosquito district will be moving in at some point um pretty soon it's, it's just we might give them access to it because we have to go through decam for you know the state because the mosquito district is quasi state um so it i think the lease is going to take forever it's going to be one of those things that goes on for months but we're, we're going to have them in there even though just so that the building's not empty i don't want any excuse for the insurance company to say that it's a vacant you know empty building so um you might want to get somebody in there to clean up all that as all the uh, kevin kevin installation yeah kevin's supposed to do that he's supposed to yeah, carpet okay. it okay well i mean it's it, the, the i mean the documents are in the one room in the safe so you know they're they're self-contained and they're in the basement so like I don't imagine you're going to put people down there anyway. Yeah. Well, we'll get going on it. And just one more thing, Peter. <laughs> I write. That's why I have to write notes to myself all the time. Yeah, I know. It's like fifty it's the same million. Thing. Yeah. Fifty million things I got to follow up on. But um, anyway, I will follow up on that because I I really do want the records out and um, uh, you know, but I don't want our building to be vacant. So. All right. But I think well, it's, not an issue I'll get, I'll get a key and go check out the church um i can't okay. do it tomorrow but probably wednesday okay okay you mean thursday whatever yeah today's not, not tomorrow maybe it's friday i'm talking about yeah. okay this is wednesday yeah yeah it's probably friday all right well i i, I just feel bad because bob's mom's not not well and so he's been trying to fiddle around with this too but we'll we'll, we'll get it sorted out but, but I, if, it, if the safety uh, issues involved then we're okay we don't need to pull it either well i don't i'm not sure we have we haven't you know we have we have to get the fire on board you know the fire people have to be there willing to be there and they have to be on board so there's there's a lot of stuff moving parts on this but that's why you need to be thinking about the pulley thing because I didn't realize that we couldn't do it that way. And so we're gonna to have to come up with some alternatives. So we need to have that in our back pocket. So think about that too, how that would work. Well, I mean, the only thing I can think of right off is if you had like a, you know, one of the rollers that you, <clears throat> that you use to, for pies, Oh, you mean a uh, um yeah. No, I have the, I have the, a marble one that would be really strong. well what I'm what I'm thinking about is you need something like that in a stand. So the rope goes over the top of it. So when you pull the rope, it rolls and then allows the the the, the rope to go back. Because the rope's gotta go back and forth. There's a well, you can't there's a pull of about like this to make the bell work. So you, you're going to have to pull it down about three feet every time you ring the bell. So that's got to go this way, and then it's got to go this way. And we got to figure out a way to keep it from rubbing on the edge of the rail because it, it it's off center. The you know instead of the rope coming down like you know like this, you you're doing one of these numbers, and then you're trying to get it over the sill here. Yep. Yeah. And then it's down below. But that's not going to work because people are going to be flat up against the church. So you're going to have to step out even further. So, well, let me look at the logistics of it and see if I can figure out something about that. But it seemed to me that, you know, if we've got parents going up with their kids, the two of them should be able to stand there and ring a bell and the parent can take the kid away so he doesn't fall over the banister. Just, I know, I know, I know. What about if we just block it off? So you can't get to the banister. Well, that would be the best if we can block it. Well, you could do that easily. I mean, it, it, what, you, what you've got is the, yeah, I'm trying to figure out how to show you this. I mean, if, it, if this is the edge of the banister going down, then you've got a gap, you've got a, a full 
set of seats, pews, then you've got a gap, then you've got another full set of pews before you even get to the to the banister. So if you block it off on this end and, and the other end, unless they're climbing over the, the pews, no, they can't get to the front. No, that's what we have to do. We have, it would be best to block it off completely. So it's just, you're just going up and at the bell and then you come down. Well, you're going up one flight of stairs, you're going along the back of that, not, a, not, a, not adjacent to the balcony, but eight feet back, you're going into the room, you're gonna pull the bell, you're gonna walk across that back room down the flight of stairs. So, I mean, we can manage it so that only, you know, two or four people come up the stairs at any one time, go into the room, ring the bell, go out, exit out the door and never even get to the, to the balcony. Yeah, well, that's what, the balcony is a concern. It, you know, it's a safety concern. So if we can block it off effectively, then that's good. Yeah, I don't know why we couldn't do that. Yeah, well, that would, that would make all the difference in the world. All right, well, let me give it a whirl. All right, Bob is Bob is available by phone. I okay. it, not poor poor Chris needs to go, but let yep. me give you let me give you Bob's um, phone number so that after you're thinking about it, he he is available. It is four one three 